Thank you for your interest in this Geotech Center video on building relationship classes. My name is Wing Cheung, and I'm a professor of geography and GIS at Palomar College. In this video, you'll learn how to create a new table object, add new fields to the table, build a relationship class, and make simple edits to test things out. If you wish to follow the demonstration, please download and unzip the files that you can access through this website to your storage drive, whether it be your hard drive or your flash drive, before viewing the demonstration. To provide you with a little background, you have been given a geodatabase with a point layer or point feature class that represents various museums in Balboa Park San Diego. Your supervisor wants to also use the geodatabase to store the events that will take place in each of the museum. Since multiple events will be taking place at each museum on different dates, we need to create a table that can store all the events and somehow tie that table to the museum layer using a relationship class. We will start the demonstration by first finding the file that we downloaded and also by creating a new table object that will be storing the events for each of our museums. So first open ArcGIS Pro, create a blank project I'll call my project relationship class. Once the project has been created, look at your catalog tab. And here, you're going to right click on folders and add a connection to where you have stored the file that you downloaded and unzipped. In my case, it's in this relationship class folder here. So once I have made this folder connection, you can see here's a folder that I just downloaded and unzipped. Within it is another folder. And within that, you have this places.gdb or this places geodatabase, which contains the sample files that we're going to use in our demonstration. So if you right click on museum and go to add to new map, you should see here's Balboa Park in San Diego. And there are these points that are on the map that shows you basically what type of museum we're looking at. In order to create a table object that will allow us to store the list of events, right click on the places.gdb, go to new and select table. Now we'll name the table events. and click Run. And close this window. If you look back at the Places Geodatabase, now we have a table object as well as the museum's feature class that already came with the sample um, data set that you download. Now that we've created the table, we need to add new fields to the table that allow us to enter information such as the name of the event, when the event will occur, and then also a special ID that will allow us to tie that table to the museum points. To add new fields to our table, right click on the events table, go to design, go to fields, and you can see, again, you have some fields like object ID that's automatically created 
with the table. To add new fields, click on this bottom line here. Click here to add a new field. We'll add in a field that's called name. And this will be of the text type because this is where we're going to enter the name of the event. Click there again to add in another field. This time we'll call it when. And the date type or data type will be date because this is where we're going to put when that event is happening. Add another field called museum ID. This field is extremely important. Just as I've said before, this is the information or this is the field that will allow us to tie this table back to the museum's feature class. So for this field, we're going to want the data type of long. Very importantly, remember to hit save. Now that we have finished adding the fields that we want, to the new table that we have created. We're ready to build the relationship class to tie the table to the museum's feature class. To build the relationship class, right click on the Places GeoDatabase, go to New, and select Relationship. Here, you're asked a list of questions that will go into the construction of this relationship class. First, you're asked what is the origin table. And here we're going to select museums as the origin table. And then we're going to select events as the destination table. And we're going to name our relationship class museum has events. The relationship type, we're going to specify that as a composite relationship. In a composite relationship, the existence or the lifespan of a feature in the origin table control the lifespan of an object in the destination table. In other words, if a museum no longer exists, all of the events that are associated with that museum will be taken out as well. So basically, in a composite relationship, the origin feature class controls the lifespan of the objects that are in the destination table. Now, for cardinality, we're going to select one to many because we can have one museum with many events. And here, for the primary key, we're going to select object ID because the primary key is that key information or that key identifier in the origin table that will be used to tie itself to the table that is from the events table. So for the foreign key, right, again, this is another key or identifier, except it is an identifier that is in the events table that will allow us to tie right, that table to the museum's feature class. So here I'm going to select Museum ID as my foreign key and click Run. Now if I close this window, you can see a relationship class has been created for me. To make sure that everything is working, I'm going to close out of these other windows or tabs that I don't need. Refresh my Places Geo database, just for good measures. Add in the museum's feature class to a new map, as well as the events table 
to my map. So as you can see here in your table of contents, you should have the museum feature class as well as the events table. Now that we've finished adding our feature classes or feature class and table to the map, we're ready to make some simple edits to make sure that our relationship class and our table object is working. In particular, as you may recall, Right, the whole purpose of doing this exercise with relationship class is because we have multiple events, as you can see in this window, right, that may need to be recorded for each of the museum points. So that's exactly what we're going to try to do in our map now. The previous window that I just showed you was showing you the list of events that were going to be happening in the Wuben H Fleet Science Center. So to make this edit, we'll go to Edit, click on Select, and select a point for the Wuben H Fleet Science Center. Click on Attributes, and you can see here are some attribute information that has been typed in for us from the previous editor that created the these points. In the attribute windows, you'll notice that there's a small triangle next to the name of the museum. If I click on that, here's the events table, right, which is showing up because of the relationship class that we built. If we right click on events, you can click on add new to relationship to basically add in a new event name. So one of the events that is coming up at the Science Center is Young Scientists. And it's going to be on February 22nd at 9 a.m. And I'm going to hit save to save my edits. There we are. And another event. So let's look back here. Another event that's coming up is on February 24th called Junior Science Club. So we just right click on events click on Add New to Relationship, name, it is Junior Science Club, and this is going to be on the 24th at 11 a.m. and hit Save, Save All Edits, And you can continue to add in new events as you like. But this is pretty much the process with creating relationship classes in ArcGIS Pro. So please see the Geotech Center website for more demonstration videos. And to learn more, you can also find other resources on the Geotech Center website, including model courses. My name is Wing Xiong. I'm a professor of geography at Palomar College and assistant director of the Geotech Center. And here's my contact information. And I want to thank you for spending the time to watch this video.